Hi everybody, it's Brian from The Podiatry Hive again. And what I'd like to do over this video today is to start to have a look at this idea of emotional intelligence. It's a funny thing, isn't it, that people say, take the emotion out of the business. It's an impossible thing to do, and particularly when you work in small business like yours. So we're gonna have a look today at some ways that we might be able to use emotion to help us build better relationships with our team and with our clients. So when we have a look at this idea of emotion, it comes from the Latin word motare, which means to move. And as I said, logic makes me think, but emotions make me act. Now, if you went outside and you looked at some people walking down the street, you could pretty much guess what they're going through emotionally. Because what happens with people is that there's energy coming off them. We use the word emotion, energy in motion. And there's energy coming off them. You know how sometimes you can walk into a business, let's say it's your business, and a, and a, a customer or a uh, patient would say, wow, the vibe in here is really good. Or you might have walked into a meeting sometime and you think, oh, you could cut the air with a knife. You have no evidence other than what your body's telling you about the situation. So there's energy coming off people. And there's energy coming off you as well. And when we're in relationship and communication, where that energy meets, that's where relationship occurs. Relationship occurs in the space between us. And the most constructive people are able to use that space to create a sense of trust, a sense of rapport, a sense of working together. Often what we do is we work in this world of here, this thing called going head to head with somebody, head to head. And when we would talk about sport in a head to head competition, it's often about having to win. I often say to people, couldn't you have some great conversations if you didn't have to win, if you could just have a dialogue about things? But I do know this, that having relationships where we can build a heart-to-heart -heart relationship, where we can talk about how we feel, we can ask feelings questions of our, our patients, it builds greater strength of relationship, greater trust, and I think too, it brings more of the humanity into the work that we do. So what we wanna be able to do is to constructively use the space between us to do that. So if we are going to be able to be adept at, at working that space between us, then we better get pretty clear about what is that feeling that I'm experiencing from that person? And then also, what am I experiencing in this moment? Because we can have a, either have energy that is what we would say dissonant and clashing, or we can have a resonant relationship where it's harmonious. If an angry person comes to you and you try to trump their anger with your anger, nothing's going to work. If an angry client comes in or an angry patient comes in and they are dissatisfied with something that you've done for them and you try to defend and justify, you're not honouring their feeling. So we'd like to give you a way of expressing your feelings and we give you just basically four buckets of feelings. Sad, mad, glad and scared. Now there are many, many, many more emotions than that. But a lot of the emotions we use can be wrapped up into these four buckets. Sad, mad, glad, and scared. And if I can find out how I'm feeling and maybe uh, identify how that other person is feeling, I'll be able to work out how can I use the feeling to help in the situation that's going on. We talk about the idea of sadness being the emotion of loss. If somebody comes in to you and they're disappointed, Sit with that feeling for a moment and say, what do you feel like you've lost? And if they're able to enunciate that, then you can say, well, let's have a look at some ways we might be able to get that back. And automatically you trigger in their brain a release of the dopamines, the oxytocin, the serotonin, the thing that brings great uh, positivity to their life. If somebody's feeling angry or if you're feeling angry, understand this, it's the emotion of change. So when you get a bit frustrated about things at work in your practice, start to say to yourself, before you start to blame everybody else in the business, go, 
what do I need to change? And quite often it's about your style of leadership or quite often it's about I need to be more forthright or I need to be clearer in my directions with people. The emotion of change. When I'm feeling glad about things, if your practice is sailing along, there's plenty of lovely patients coming in, you're making some good money, you've got some good processes in place uh, and it's working for you, don't just sit on it. Say, well, how do I improve that? And certainly, what do I need to do to at least maintain that? So maintain and improve when things are going well. And then the last one is when I'm feeling scared, and in small business, you know that there are nervous times for yourself. Mm -hmm. Cash flow might be short, patients mightn't be around. So thinking about that and going, okay, so when I'm feeling nervous, do I need to be safe or brave? Quite often, we need to make some brave steps to advance our business. At other times, we need to pull back in and just settle everything down and play safe. Starting to work with the sad, mad, glad and scared are going to help you in your journey towards building the business that you want.